Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Almost 30 Podcast. Hello, my sweet ones. Hello, sweeties. <laughs> Welcome to Almost 30. You don't need to be any age. You can be at whatever age you want. You can be... Oh. <laughs> you can be yourself. <laughs> you can be yourself. We've had a day of recording. Here. It has been a lot of energy. Yes. Truly very incredible, much needed yes. uh, conversations and energy flowing through almost 30 HQ, but I was just, we were just talking about how I was like, oh, I'm, it's not that I'm tired. I'm just kind of like, mm -hmm. I need a moment. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Where I'm like, I have to remember sometimes when we're talking to like the most profound people on the planet, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I need to come back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it is, it's one, it's, you want to be more in, like you want to be more in reverence of the conversation mm -hmm. instead of being like, bye. And then you're like on your computer exactly writing an email or something you know you want to be exactly. like i know i've completely thought about that too and it's then yeah it, yeah it's almost like relishing relish I, I i love to relish more whenever anyone has like one thing a day i'm like that's my goal soon yes when people are like what are you doing today i'm like what do you mean <laughs> i'm back like, to back from yeah, nine to seven like can i come over and can i come over this week and i'm like what <laughs> You know, it's like come over during the day. I know. Well, yeah, when I'm here, we, we really pack it in. Yes. Maybe next time we'll, we'll, we'll schedule in some little resties. But. And when you are with, and we, when we have had interviews with really big dynamic energies, there's a lot happening in the conversation and then yeah. there's a lot happening outside of it, you know, in the quantum mm -hmm. or just in the, and the energy. So that's the thing too, is we have different various energies and situations and conversations that are kind of pulling us in different in different ways so it can get really tiring i mean thinking about having deep intense intimate conversation for three hours a day mm -hmm. like how often and how quickly people numb out yes with little engagement it's a lot mm -hmm. you know to, to pay attention for that long so yeah just sharing BTS. Just sharing some BTS because <laughs> Lindsay on our last call was, oh, wow. I was just like, well, I couldn't. I know. I couldn't, couldn't find it. I couldn't find my place. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, am I needed here? <laughs> I'm just oh kind of like, God, there's fucking, fucking hilarious. nine people on the call. <laughs> I'm like, which Brady am I? <laughs> I couldn't find my place. <laughs> oh my god, dude, that's so. And so funny. I was just a teenager. That's so fucking real for everyone on Zoom with more than like four people on a call. It's like, what is my place? I'm gonna do other stuff. Well, also, I just sometimes I don't have like uh, not patience because that seems too no, harsh. It's but it's like it's I I don't have patience for like yeah, where it's like. It's almost like a oh a time waster, but then I'll start to waste time too because we're just wasting time. So I'm like, hundred percent. <laughs> what was I actually looking at? Um, maybe it was our friend Natalie from Boss Babe. Now only does maybe one, two meetings a week or something, and her productivity has gone up. Or smart, forget, forget who it was, but they were just talking a lot about how with less meetings sometimes productivity can just be really increased. And I do think that there's something that happens where it's like you ha kind of have to like it exp okay time expands and you kind of have to pull the reins on some things where you're like what are we doing here yeah you kind of get on this train or track with meetings or calls and like all of a sudden you're like what are we doing mm -hmm. like some you know it's just kind of like no one's really paying attention but we're all there and we're all kind of talking yes. you need to be like pulling back hello everyone yeah who are you and why are you here <laughs> Who are you? Why are you here? <laughs> I don't have a place. I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna hit the road. <laughs> you guys, can, I'll be over here if you need me. It was. It, it's just. <laughs> and honestly, running a tight meeting is an amazing gift. It's an art. It's an art. Keeping, but this is the whole thing: is we've been on Zoom for over a year, mm -hmm. so it's like we're all kind of like anytime we kind of get on Zoom and we're in that space, it's hard to pay attention you almost leave your body right away yes you're like oh bye <laughs> you're, you're, krista's with the cat i'm yeah, like on dude, my phone I was, I was petting my cat the whole time out of frame she would go out of frame i was out of frame petting my cat uh -huh. uh, not even meaning to be disrespectful just like 
Also, it's just, I mean, you all know this. It's its hard after a long day to just really pay attention for a long period of time about yeah. things. Give yourself some room Give to yourself laugh some about it. <laughs> just LOL about Zoom. Oh, man. Well, today's interview, I swear to you. Well, first, I feel like this has been... Long time. Long so time in the making. I started listening to podcasts uh, 2013. Rich Roll was one of my first. So I listened to Rich Roll and then Tim Ferriss and then Lewis Howes. Those were my first podcasts, I believe. And I was in New York City and I was commuting like, you know, the normal New York City commute, 45 minutes um, every day and then and then some whenever I was going places. And so I found podcasts and it changed my life. My friend Adam Kossoff introduced me, who you met, you know Adam, mm-hmm. introduced Adam. me to podcasts. He's like, I think you'd like these. And I remember actually we were in Union Square. We had met up and he's like, I think you'll really like this and showed me podcasts. And I was just hooked. You know, the opportunity to learn um, while I was on my way to work and I didn't want to read. I didn't want to look at my phone. I didn't want to listen to music. Mm. And it really, really, truly, truly changed my life. And Rich Rolls was one of them. You know, I really just love Rich's vocabulary. I love his depth. I love his questions. I love his like honesty. And whenever he would have his wife on, Julie Pyatt, Trimati, who's on the show today, it was just mind blowing. Like I had really never had access to someone that was that dialed, Mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of the concepts that she talked about throughout the throughout the years on the ritual show really are things that I think about. Like they're the things that you never forget. You know how yes. sometimes people will say something one off, like example, Manuela, who we had on the podcast a bit ago, we had Palo Santo out and she's like, oh yeah, do you guys use it to clear? And we're like, yeah, sometimes we'll use a little bit of Palo Santo spray or whatever to clear. And she's like, I find that it calls in spirits for me. And I'll just never forget that. It's like a weird thing. I'm like, oh, it sometimes can call in spirits. So with um, Julie Pyatt, Mm -hmm. Srimati, it was like that, you know, whether it was her talking about their financial collapse and really the fact that she completely, like we talked about in this episode, held the pose and held the faith in life, in their relationship with spirit, that they would get out of this Mm -hmm. spiritual moment. I mean, that is so powerful. Y'all, and let's set the state. I mean, yes, four kids, four kids living in a I just had a baby with and living really well. Yes. And she'll talk about it a little bit more and they go in detail on rich roll. But they had cars repossessed. They had people trying to get their house. They had no money in any of their bank accounts and they were just the very bottom. And now you can see that they're very both successful doing things that they love, living a life of heart that they love and making a lot of impact. So especially as the feminine, you know, I think that's what I didn't see um, as an example in my life. I didn't see the woman really holding it down in the way of like the faith. Yes. And so to be the one that is more intuitive oftentimes um, is more connected, is more spiritually focused and really be that for the family is just Mm -hmm. so powerful. And then there was a lot about spirituality that she spoke about, you know, whether it was ayahuasca and talking about how sometimes you can open up portals and dimensions to places you might not want to go and other different things. It was just very advanced. Like she was, she's been probably one of the most advanced yes. spiritual women that I've been able to have access to. So to have her on the show is just incredible. You know, it feels like a full circle moment and I really enjoyed this conversation and I know you will too. She has something about the way that she speaks where you really listen there's really no room for you to not listen. Mm -hmm. And so this one will be one that, you know, you're going to find yourself enjoying all the way through. Yeah. She really knows herself. Yes. Granted, she's, she just turned 59. She's going through her second Saturn return, which we talked about, but, um, there really is this emanation of like such a profound beauty from her because she knows herself, you know? And we talk about beauty actually at the top of this episode, um, which was, really powerful and fascinating. We also talk about rewriting, how to be in partnership. We talk about alchemy. We talk about collaboration. Um, We talk about just how every single moment is divine and really kind of tracking through her life. And even those moments of just absolute rock bottom, how, how truly divine they are. So 
This one is another one that you're going to want to listen to over and over, I'm sure. Share with your friends. Save. Um, she's just a beautiful soul. She's um, not only a mystic, but she's a mu- musician. She's an artist. She's a chef, author, healer. So truly just kind of like living fully in this lifetime. Mm-hmm. It's really Completely. cool to see. Yeah, it's a mix of spirituality. It's a mix of personal growth. And I think this one was really powerful. Me and Lindsay felt really aligned and excited to share this with you. So if you find you connect with it, definitely share with a friend, send to someone you love, have a conversation about it. I find it to be incredibly inspiring. And then you can find more information about Sri Mati on her website. Her website is juliepyatt.com and her Instagram is Sri Mati. So S-R-I-M-A-T-I. And then she has Srimu, which is the subscription box artisanal not cheeses which are plant-based cheeses which i'm so excited to try yes same i'm so excited same Same. um and she also has you probably know the cookbook the plant power away um i have plant power away you do Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i wish i cooked one recipe out of it but (laughs) i've never cooked a single recipe from a cookbook in my life yeah she's it was a dream it was a sweet moment for me (laughs) i was like i want to support their family one day (laughs) and then never use it and she has a podcast for the life of me and you can also listen to her husband's podcast rich Roll, the Rich Roll podcast, and she's been on a ton of times. So search those episodes. But Julie, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you all for listening. Enjoy this one. Enjoy this one. Almost 30.com, almost 30 podcast. I am at it's Krista on Instagram. And I'm at Lindsay Simsick. Enjoy. Bye. Because I wanted to talk a lot about beauty and you know, you've helped reframe a lot for me in my life just through the years. I started listening to Rich eight years ago when I was in New York. I was just having my spiritual awakening. And when you would come on, it was like this. I had never heard a woman be so in her power in the way that you were. And it was like this like drop of like clear medicine that was like, whoa, I had never... Because the ways in which I had heard women be in their power was it was the ways in which of like what the feminist movement has portrayed, which is working hard, climbing the ladder, that sort of thing. But yours was just such a medicine woman way of expressing yourself that I I just will never forget. And one of the things that you really retaught me or reframed for me was around beauty and the importance of beauty, and it really liberated for me a lot of the shame I felt of wanting to live in beautiful spaces or see beautiful things or feel beautiful in my clothes and feel beautiful in my experience. Can you talk a little bit more about how you perceive and see beauty? Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you for that. I'm I'm honored that I held a little bit of support or oh, yes. inspiration for you. So thank you for that recognition. Uh, sometimes, you know, when I'm when I'm kicking dirt, I'm like, I'm just going to go sing and I'm going to stop talking completely because <laughs> my singing voice is very soft. Like when people hear me sing, they're like, that's your voice. That's your singing voice. And it's very soft and very feminine. And it's it's a very sacred thing for me. And a lot of times when I listen to myself back, I'm like, oh, like you're, you know, because when I speak, there is a certain energy or power mm-hmm. that I feel. And yes. so sometimes my personality would prefer me to not be so intense. So thank you for that Mm -hmm. reflection. But I think that, you know, maybe in the earlier days of my spiritual awakening, which is forever going eternally for multiple lifetimes. So it's just, you know, nobody, nobody get all excited because you've hit a level because (laughs) there is no level. Um, But I guess what, um, what was amazing, and, and I feel some of the energetic of what you were just speaking to. So it's the conflict when we step on the path and we're like, wait, I'm, I'm spiritually connected, so now I want to be a monk, and I should be okay with shaving my head. And, you know, how about if I put on this orange, you know, robe, or I sleep on the floor on a mat? You know, all these are experiences that can be very beneficial and very expansive. And we are in a modern world, and likely we have had those experiences in other space times or other places of our identity. And what I started to realize that even the shaved head is an outfit, You know, even the orange robe is an outfit. And so when I used to be um, suspect or critical of myself for, for instance, liking to perform or liking to speak or wanting to be seen, um, what I started to do is shift the lens on that and receive that as a divine part of my makeup. So if I am going to uh, be one of the luminaries of this planet and this realm, um, then I'm going to need to speak.
So, so what if that attribute of mine, the fact that I love fashion, that I was a fashion designer, that I love ceremoniously dressing myself, that being in an amazing space impacts the energetics of everything that I'm doing. So what if all of that is in fact part of my superpower, is in fact the thing that makes me able to fully embody all that I am? And then I came into connection with that beauty is actually the first tenet of a spiritual life. As human beings, being in beauty, now that might, I'm not talking about beauty from the mall, but let's talk about beauty uh, connected to nature and the nectar of a mango and the aroma of a lemon and the, you know, the otherworldly magic of a, of a leaf, of a plant. Like yesterday I was walking just somewhere very normal and I looked down and saw this leaf that looked like it, it was out of Avatar. And I just said to it, like, you're so beautiful. Like, you know, it's all around us. And being in that beauty through food, through sensuality, through sensory experiences, I mean, we are in the physical form. We are in the form. And so a uh, beauty for me is the foundation of living a spiritual life. Mm. Yeah, I, I've often had those moments in nature and, and I've noticed a correlation between my ability to have reverence for nature and my ability to have reverence for my own beauty. And there are days when, you know, we're a little bit harder on ourselves and it's almost like that awareness switch isn't turned on. And so I'm unable to really take in the beauty around me and have reverence for that because of kind of this inner dialogue or um, resistance to really like owning, but uh, owning my own beauty. But also on days when I'm like, wow, I look in the mirror, I'm like, you're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm like then high the rest mm -hmm. of the day. I'm like, I see it. I see it in every little thing and every person's face and the trees. So as far as this like inner dialogue with yourself around your own beauty, was it always as what I'm seeing as like clear and confident? No, I mean, uh, you know, definitely not. I mean, there's, uh, so let me get to, this is the basis of my spiritual mentorship group, Water Tiger, which is an online community that I lead monthly. And, um, what happened is about two years ago, I just became overwhelmed and overcome with this awareness that all of the energy that we are putting out on social media is polluting the energetic field. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, deeply struck with the need to make sure that what I was sharing was curated in a certain way, almost like the most beautiful collection, you know, like, and, and being conscious of, you know, filming yourself brushing your teeth is not without a negative drag, like mm. on the totality of life, right? Mm. And so it's this very push-pull, very um, very complex thing, social media, and obviously we're, we're both, you know, connected to uh, sharing our messages online, and I've met some really amazing people and had transformative experiences there. But, but let's really look at what are we doing to the energetic? Like thoughts are things, and mm -hmm. content is thing is a thing. And so, you know, do you really need to post? Like, if you look at what you're sharing from that viewpoint, and you're wanting to be living in harmony with life, then you know what is what is worthy and what is waste, basically. So, um, so I was uh, overcome and I thought, you know, I'm going to not post and I'm going to, I had, I had, I took a step back and I didn't expect the step to be a year and a half, but I just kept feeling this energetic of no, no. And I did a lot of inner searching about, okay, if I was going to leave the planet tomorrow, what do I want to have left for my family, those, those other humans that are searching like me? And what would um, be a completion of the gifts that I've been given? You know, because in the sharing of the gifts we've been given is part of the digesting of the experience of learning. It's like you have to offer it back before you're fully complete. Um, and so I spent this time curating, well, what would that be? And so Water Tiger is what I call a way to no way. And this way to no way is a portal of techniques that lead you back into full union and love with yourself. 
Now, why is that? A lot of time in spirituality, we think, well, wait to serve the other. That's the highest spiritual way. And and even martyrdom, and it's in our history, you know, even going back. And um, I wasn't even really always connected with it. Sometimes martyrdom hides in a in a lens of loyalty, okay? And you can be very, think loyalty is a very good thing. It's a very altruistic thing. But if you examine it more deeply, it's the other side of martyrdom. So with Water Tiger, if I could provide techniques that were useful, simple, beautiful, applicable to anyone, no matter if they're in a multidimensional experience of life and, you know, love Star Wars and, you know, multi-planet uh, vistas like me, or if you're just a salt of the earth person that just wants to walk, um, they had to apply to everyone and be the support. Um, and what Water's mis- Water Tiger's mission is, the reason it's called Water Tiger is because I worked with this uh, Chinese physician who reminded me that I'm a tiger. But he said, you're not just a tiger, you're a water tiger, which affects your sensitivity immensely, mm. which is your superpower and also can be your fragility if you don't understand it. So the whole time I was doing it, I was looking for a much more marketable term that would really, really hit that, you know, like a one word thing, mm-hmm. but it never came. And so water tiger is because those techniques allow you to fall into your life print mm. and really embody who you are. So I always say there's nothing more beautiful than a being that knows itself And in order to know yourself, you have to love yourself. And in order to love another, you have to love yourself. Mm -hmm. So if if you really want to embody love, you have to begin with yourself. And this comes with this union. One of the water tiger techniques is this mirror gazing where you sit in the mirror and look at what is. And there's many different twists and turns that occur on this ride. But, um, but it's a very self-full embodiment. So water tiger is so you fully embody. There's a saying that if you don't embody your full life print, something or someone else will. Because we're in a vampiric parasitic mm-hmm. system. So if you look at it like that and start to expand out, like how can I fully be present in the life print? Fully, fully, fully. And if I'm fully present and if I'm serving myself as the first a duty. The first responsibility is to myself. Every single event is, is this in the highest divine alignment with myself? Is, is this life affirming for me? Right. And then once you're fully embodied, it flowers this immense compassion, unconditional love, energy, vitality, ability to lead, to hold, to share, to love because you've taken care of of the first vessel, which is this temple that we're all living in. Yeah, I'm, it's interesting about the vampiric piece, and I think social media speaks a lot to that. And there's a lot of vampiricism that happens through technology and social media. How did you come to t- realize or understand like the vampiric nature of energy and how if we aren't in our fullest embodiment that that could potentially happen? Um, through a lot of deep study with different mentors and teachers. And I have this sort of unique training of being a, a modern shaman. So you may not know this about me, but I um, I uh, work with personal clients and also in my community. And so uh, I'm able to um, go down ancestral lines and take out like networks of miasm. So we can just look back thousands of years, um, the um, complete annihilation of the feminine uh, spirit on this planet, the feminine energy, and really everything about our world that is starting to be revealed to us now at this very profound time of transformation and of awakening. Um, so I see it in my in the people that I mentor um, through forms of Um, you know, the level of the amount of uh, sexual um, Mm -hmm. abuse and molestation in children. It's so prevalent. It's not even rare. It's actually quite common. So I would say probably over 90% of the people that I work with have been violated or molested as children, both, Mm -hmm. both men and women. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just look at that and you look around the planet and you look at how we treat each other and our earth and our animals and everything. And it's, it's evident, you know, it's quite evident. And also as humans, we are feeling empathic 
uh, familial, community, uh, interconnected, um, uh, th- we're, we're relational and we are artists and lovers and healers. And so um, these acts that we see reflected in our humanity, um, they're not human. Mm-hmm. They're inhumane. Mm-hmm. And we have been deadened. And I'm not, bl- I'm not judging or blaming anyone. Uh, it has been by design. And so it's not that oh, the men are all bad or the, you know, the women are all bad or the, you know, or it's, it, it's beyond that. It's so beyond that. And so this is why it is imperative that we reconnect with the spiritual truth of who we are. Mm-hmm. Spiritual connection is one. It's not 59th. Mm-hmm. It's one. It's the first one. If you can make that connection you know, like in Tantra or in Vedic lineage, there isn't a need for rules or dogma because if you're aligned with the being, I mean, just consider it. Consider a being fully sitting in who they are, embodied in who they are. Um, They are going to naturally and spontaneously be in right action, right speech, right creation. No, they don't, you don't need someone to tell you don't do that. You wouldn't be in your makeup to do that. And every situation is unique and every individual is unique. And so what this time is on the planet right now is the uh, crumbling of that complete um, parasitic parasitic system and it's many other things. Um, But it's the moment. It's the moment Mm -hmm. that we took a body for, that we're waking up to experience together and rewrite together. Yeah, and I think just on the the one piece, it's like when we find ourselves with a culture and society that doesn't have spirituality as the first, in our in our from my perspective, it feels like we search for that one. So we make culture that God, or we make all of these things sort of like our false idols and our gods because it's in our nature to be like a seeking being and to find or seek like a source or a spirit. And so whenever I find people off the path or even myself when I was off the path it was really because I didn't have spirituality as my number one or spirit or source as my number one so then I fell victim or prey to other agendas or other ideas or other things that were really taking the place of like my God source or spirit yeah definitely I mean and again um, there is beauty in all religions there is the the truth that is a part of all of these systems and these systems universally have been manipulated by, mm-hmm. I'll say men. <laughs> I could say men and women, but I'll just say men. <laughs> um, and so they're, and they're confusing because they have some elements of truth, but they all also have uh, a lot of, um, a lot of manipulation and a, a lot of darkness in them. And so, you know, a lot of times working with people who want to reclaim with their spirituality, I mean, a lot of people come to me who have been raised in uh, very fundamentalist Mm -hmm. religious um, lifestyles and then they're relieved because what I'm presenting is allowing them their spirituality home Mm -hmm. because it's a dogma free like even in my community you know somebody on social media like called me a fake guru and I laughed because I'm not a guru and Mm -hmm. I'm very clear about it like I'm Mm -hmm. not taking responsibility I have my own life and my own responsibility I am sharing experiences um, from my own experience. Like I always teach from my own experience um, and that is it. Mm -hmm. So in the community, and I state it at the beginning of every call, I am not taking responsibility. This is your responsibility. Your journey to self-realization will be completely unique to you and you alone. If these help you, beautiful. This will not be forever. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But it's like, I have four children of my own. I have my own little child that I'm devoted to. And and I don't want, you know, I'm I'm just not in it. I'm not in it. I don't want anybody else's energy. I'm not taking your energy. And the, the the tricky thing, and I've had many gurus and I I have a lot of lifetimes in Vedic lineage. And I love them deeply. And it's always a warning sign when somebody says, I'll take care of that for you. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not taking care of anything for you. You take care of yourself. <laughs> um, but when I was younger, when you're, you know, in other other times, you know, it's like I think I think one of the other things is as humans, we want the quick fix. Mm-hmm. Yes. We, we don't want to take responsibility. Exactly. And that's maybe another portal into the whole ayahuasca craze, mm-hmm. which I'm, you know, I'm sure has some, you know, 
very expansive experiences and and also a lot of confusion around it. Mm. So um, I actually remember that was profound too, hearing you talk about plant medicine years ago together and talking about, I'll never forget, you were speaking to, you're like, I don't know what sort of portal or dimension that will open. Like I'm not completely aware and I, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but it was really profound because when you are tapping into that, you don't know what sort of technology lays on the other side. You don't know what sort of dimensions you're opening yourself up to in a spiritual way. And it's not always safe to do things like that. No, it's very, I mean, it's very problematic. And especially in a modern culture where you don't have, Mm -hmm. you don't have a teacher next to you to be with you through the months as you're being, you know, it's like, it's like ripping the skin or the layer off Mm -hmm. of your being. And if you think there's a lot of light and dark going on in this realm, well, there's equally as much in any other system that you step into. So unless you're a badass and you know, you know exactly what to do, or you have a really great shaman, um, and a lot of people do. Listen, I have a really dear friend who had really profound experiences. And, you know, you hear this. Um, and it is not for everyone. And it is, um, it's individual. And there is a very real, very, very, uh, very real, very physical reality. Uh, if you choose that, you may come back with more than you left with. Mm-hmm. You know, so, yeah. I think, to that, the point about you know, us wanting quick fixes is so right. And I think, you know, when capitalism kind of seeps into this spiritual experience, then that's kind of the, Mm -hmm. what lights up on the radar. It's like, ah, they want a quick fix. And so, you know, for ayahuasca to become something that is so trendy, it just kind of loses, loses the support, safety, education, because they want it to be quick. They want it to be the thing that heals them of 30 years of trauma, depression, et cetera. And it I just, think that's a good point too about the capitalism because it removes it from nature, which is its original exactly. source. Yeah, and I feel like capitalism comes into, you know, we were just talking to Zach Bush about like agriculture. Mm-hmm. And once that comes in, it just kind of, it dirties it. And then we lose the the true source of, um, fruit, I guess, that comes from the practice or growing this one thing. Um, how have you seen, cause you've been doing this for, for a while. It's like, how have you seen capitalism kind of come in and how do you protect yourself? I don't know if that's the right languaging, but like, how do you kind of work with it and collaborate with it and stay true to who you are? Mm, that's a good question. Well, I mean, it's been, <clears throat> it's been present you know, for lifetimes. And, uh, you know, it kind of is the thing uh, that is uh, driving all of the predatory anti-life practices on the planet. And yet, you know, an alchemist uses everything, you know, so you can't, you know, and in my experience, Mm -hmm. a lot of spiritually oriented people are very um, lacking in financial power. And so in the current situation, it is a, a resource that is needed to affect change. Yes. And so we really need to, as uh, those of us that are luminaries, that are way showers, that feel like we're um, rewriting a new way of being, we need to take the responsibility to clear out those blocks. Money is not bad. It's the way that it's used. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, every, you know, most places on this planet. So um, I think it's with that awareness of, you know, in a spiritual life, you know, somebody asked me, oh, my daughter actually interviewed me recently and said, um, you know, what do you, reg- what would you change? And I said, I wouldn't change anything because in a, in a life connected to spiritual awareness, every single thing is divine, even the horrifying things. So you, mm-hmm. you, you, you receive the entire life. You know, and I think in a modern life, we're only looking for those Instagramical, Instagram quotable moments um, or, you know, looking for the good. Like, I feel bad. So, you know, what can I do to change the fact that I don't feel good, feel, feel good? Whereas if you just let yourself had one good depression, you might you might wake up, you know. Mm-hmm. So um, and uh, so. Again, it's about knowing energy is a is a force and money is energy. However, I, I will point out that a lot of spiritual seeking begins with the subject of manifestation, which is 
a representative of our need to put our material needs into a spiritual form and think somehow we're going to escape the pain of life. And it's one of the reasons why I don't teach manifestation. And I find that to be a very sticky, it's not it. Mm -hmm. And so for me, one of the techniques in Water Tiger is alignment is the new manifestation. It's about being aligned and embodied so truly that what is relevant to you is magnetically drawn. And then you you can choose to play with that or not. Um, but this idea that you're going to chant like, uh, you know, affirmations uh, it, 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 it's, it's not it that that's not spirituality. Um, and if you receive the life with devotion, um, then you will be abundant, abundantly held and blessed in many different ways. Um, but it might not look like what you think, you know, when I was in a very deep spiritual alchemization with my family, it looked like me not having a bank account, me not having, uh, health insurance, it, it looked like cars getting repossessed and it looked like not being able to pay my mortgage for five years. That's what that looked like. Mm. So I had to reframe it in that moment um, as one of profound abundance. Mm. And so I would tell people, I'm not a loser. I'm not a deadbeat. I'm in my sacred moment. Mm. And that's, mm. that's all we can do. Every event is neutral until you've applied perspective. Um, so as uh, powerful creators, we have that power to hold that lens and to put that story to it that colors it in a life-affirming way. Mm -hmm. um, and life isn't about having, you know, like Eckhart Tolle said once, you might self-realize with a million dollars in the bank, but it's not likely. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a walk with a friend the other day who actually found an amazing therapist through BetterHelp that they've been seeing every week for the past year and it has changed her life completely and it made me so grateful. Yeah, it's so it's so easy and accessible, which I think, you know, during this time is so important. So basically BetterHelp is professional counseling done securely online. So they'll assess your needs through just like a simple intake and then match you with your own licensed professional therapist. And what's great is that, you know, oftentimes we don't jive with our first therapist and they make it super, super easy to change your therapist, get a new one, and that's free to change. Yeah, and for me, therapy has been huge just in really helping me own who I am, helping me have better relationships, helping me be more successful in business. I actually want to do an episode where we talk just fully on like what we've learned in therapy, but cannot recommend better help enough. It makes it makes it accessible and affordable. It is awesome. Yes, and it is more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. So for our listeners, you can go to betterhelp.com slash almost 30. That's better H E L P dot com slash almost 30 and you'll get 10% off your first month. So special for our listeners, 10% off. And if you've been thinking about finding a therapist, this is your sign. Yeah. And you can also text our phone number. So we have a phone number for our partners to make getting the links and codes super easy for you. The number is 380-600-3030. It's 380-600-3030. And you can text the keyword help. One of my skin secrets in preventing and treating acne, I'm so excited to share with you. It is a product from Bloom, and Bloom carries all of your daily skin and body essentials. Um, and I want to talk to you about the acne fighting oil, the Meltdown acne oil. So if you have acne prone skin, you need, need, need to try Meltdown. It's super effective for fighting hormonal acne, which I have struggled with and it will not dry out or irritate your skin. So I've really found in the past that other treatments have dried out my skin and it really irritated it, but this actually like keeps my skin super healthy and moisturized and treats the acne. Um, they've sold out five times already. Um, it's been featured in Allure and Pop Sugar and a ton of other publications and thousands of five-star customer reviews. So, you know, it's the real deal. If you don't believe me, read those. Um, so I highly recommend the Meltdown Acne Oil. Uh, they are providing safe, sustainable, and effective skincare products 
products while fighting back against unattainable beauty standards. I really love this company. I love what they stand for. They have really cute packaging, which never hurts. And they donate a portion of every sale to the Days for Girls organization. Right now, you can get 15% off your first Bloom order with promo code ALMOST30 at bloom.com. So run to B-L-U-M-E.com. Use the code ALMOST30 when you get your Meltdown Acne Oil or any of their other incredible products. So again, it's bloom.com. Use the code ALMOST30 to get 15% off all of your self-care essentials. Bloom.com, code ALMOST30. Okay, tell me this. Are you as curious about crypto as I am? I just started investing and it is fascinating. I am learning so much and I am doing so through Coinbase. So if you've thought about entering the world of cryptocurrency but felt like super overwhelmed, a little intimidated like I did, Coinbase makes learning to buy and sell super, super simple. But Coinbase believes everyone everywhere should be able to get in the door. This is not like an exclusive club. Um, So whether you're just starting out or you've been trading for years, Coinbase can help. So Coinbase offers a trusted and easy to use platform to buy, sell, and spend cryptocurrency. And they support the most popular digital currencies on the market and make them accessible to everyone. They offer portfolio management and protection, learning resources, and a mobile app so you can trade securely and monitor your crypto all in one place. It's kind of fun. I'll check it like once a week. This is a long-term investment for me and I just feel really confident doing it. I'm learning a lot too. So I definitely dig into their learning resources on a regular basis so I can talk about it and I can have conversations with friends. Um, and if you don't believe me, millions of people in over a hundred countries trust Coinbase with their digital assets. So whether you're looking to diversify, just getting started or searching for a better way to access crypto markets, start today with Coinbase. And for a limited time, new users can get $5 in free Bitcoin when you sign up today at coinbase.com slash almost 30. Sign up at coinbase.com slash almost 30 for $5 in free Bitcoin. This offer is for a limited time only, so be sure to sign up today. Do it right now, right now. Coinbase.com slash almost 30. When I was creating the Sacredness of Being Single program, I had, you know, created all the content, but then wanted to translate it into a beautiful reader for my members of the program, into marketing assets uh, to promote the program. But that part of the process always stops me. And so when our team found issue, we were like, thank you. God, thank God. Issue transforms content into whatever you need. And they also distribute it to various platforms and they become SEO optimized automatically. It's so easy. It's so fun to use and has really retained like the quality of what I'm creating and made it even more beautiful. So whether you work for yourself or you're a part of a team, Time to get creative with Issue. You can make your online presence and your business stand out from the rest. I know this stops a lot of people in their process, so I want to share this with you and make it so much easier. So whether you're sharing it to the website, sharing it to Instagram, and then maybe sending to your contact. Uh, contacts, uh, Issue can create and reformat for you. You don't have to do a dang thing. Um, So this all-in-one platform will be your saving grace. They create marketing materials like magazines and flip books, brochures, and so much more. Uh, You can make it once and distribute it everywhere without reformatting. So for our listeners, you can get started with Issue today for free. If you sign up for a premium account, you will get 50% off when you go to I-S-S-U-U dot com slash podcast and use the promo code almost 30. Let me say that again. Issue dot com slash podcast and use the promo code almost 30. And when you sign up for a premium account, you will get 50% off. But if you just want to try it out for free today, you absolutely can. Go to I-S-S-U-U dot com slash podcast and use the promo code almost 30.
Okay, anybody else, you know how annoying it is when you can be like digging around in your purse or your bag when you go to the checkout or when you have to like put your phone down to pay and you forget to pick it up back up. I mean, that's me. I've left my phone so many places before. But when it's time to pay, why pull out your wallet or open your purse when you probably already have your phone in your hand? Am I right? PayPal QR code payments are now accepted at CVS stores nationwide. So exciting. So it's really easy to make touch-free payments with your phone. Plus you get $10 cash back on your first purchase of $20 or more. So I was actually running to CVS the other day. I had to get sunscreen and makeup remover. And I was like, literally in such a rush. And I was like, Oh, I can use my PayPal QR code. And I did. And it was so easy. And again, this is touch free payments. You can use PayPal or Venmo, PayPal or Venmo. So if you're a Venmo user, go for it. You can get $10 cash back on your first in-store QR code payment of $20 or more. Okay. Again, to get $10 cash back on your first transaction of $20 or more, just head to your local CVS and pay using PayPal or Venmo app. That's $10 cash back on your first purchase of $20 or more with the PayPal or Venmo app. So go to paypal.com slash almost 30 to see terms and learn more about how to earn $10 cash back. Go to paypal.com slash almost 30. This might be my favorite thing ever lately. My Soma Vedic EMF mitigation device is the best. It's so good. I put my water on it. Dude, yeah, because it helps um, restructure the molecules of your water, basically. Mm -hmm. But Soma Vedic is designed on the principle of the controlled release of energy from precious and semi-precious stones. And it basically creates a coherent field, which covers more than 2,800 square feet. So it helps to reduce EMFs, geopathic stress. It helps with oxidative stress, free radicals. And and I notice such a difference in Mm. my energy. I'm obsessed. Same. It's so good. We have, I have the green one. Do you have the green one? I have have the the green green one one. and And? I got the red one. (laughs) You guys, the red one is for spirituality. It's for spiritual development and love. And Justin literally last week was like, yo, you're more in love than ever. (laughs) He honestly is like, this is working. He's like, this is truly working. It was actually crazy that weekend. I was like, whoa, I'm so in love right now. I think the Soma Vedic device is working. (laughs) But the reason why I was so excited to work with them is because living in a city, there's 5G towers everywhere. There's phone poles everywhere. We have uh, people living on top of us, below us. There's so many different EMFs and, uh, you know, non-coherent waves that are just all over the place that can really affect your cellular regeneration, your energy, your inflammation, your ability to recover. And I wanted something that would support me in my house. And this is like the perfect thing. Yeah, it works so well. I've actually noticed an improvement in my sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, But you can put it in your office. You can put it in like your little meditation room or space in your bedroom. Uh, And like I said, you can uh, restructure your water. So you can put like your water jugs, et cetera, around your device. But we love Soma Vedic. And this is an investment for your space that I think, you know, we don't really think about it, but it makes such an incredible difference. And we're also not thinking about how many EMFs are freaking yes. around us all the time. So and oxidative stress. Let's get her. Let's get ahead of it. Uh, we of course have a discount. Super, super excited to offer you all 10% off at somavedic.com when you use the code almost 30. So that's S O M A V E D I C dot com. And then at checkout, use the code almost 30 for. 10 percent off yeah and in speaking of your sacred moment that was something that was profound as well it's just seeing how well you held the pose within the family structure and within my family it was like if there was ever money issues or stability issues with jobs it was like there was no pose held so to see a woman as the matriarch of the family doing that, I was like, wow, that was very expanding for me. Can you talk a little bit more about that? You know, really for the family being that space where you could just hold it together in a way that was true. Yeah, that was uh, that was something. Um, <laughs> I guess I would say it began, you know, rooted and merged in my, my devotion to life and my... Um, my embodiment that each of us 
our treasures are inside of our own hearts. And that each one of us, if we want to know what to do, travel inside your heart and spend time with your being. Think of what you loved when you were six years old. And those are the things that need to be fed and nurtured and and nourished. Now, I found myself in a third marriage with my current husband, Rich. And um, I had two children from a previous marriage. And then we we were we got married when i was 3 or 4 months pregnant with our oldest daughter and then had another child after that so i guess i can't tell you that i would have been as resilient if i had known it was going to take 9 years mm-hmm. um and i'm not saying that anybody else listening to this that yours is going to be that long because we were rewriting a pattern part of you know which was a dismantling of a financial system, and also a dismantling about a way to be in partnership. And I was doing this alchemy for six individuals at once, because if I had been on my own, it wouldn't have been that scenario. And now the field is much faster. So don't be despairing if you listen to this conversation and you happen to be in a dis... I call it a sacred moment. It's when you're being dismantled, and it's when the universe turns the faucet in the off position. Now, I had my first job when I was 12 years old. Funny enough, I worked the cheese board at Burger King. Wow. Of course. Did How did I know I was going <laughs> to end up having I a... I love that Burger King has a cheese board. I, I had <laughs> like, a, well, it was the cheese side of like all the sandwiches, okay. right? <laughs> that, but they did. They called it the cheese you board. You made it fancy. Isn't that funny? Yes. That's so funny. So, it, it, and I'm getting a lot of that in my life now. Yes. I turned 59 <clears throat> last week and I'm getting a lot of those... Uh, those elements are looping in Mm. and all I have to say is we are all so connected and even you know things with my father that I never even saw before and it's incredible it's incredible but anyway um so uh I knew the faucet was in the off position and I could feel it Mm. and it's scary because you're like oh my god and then your friends are like send out a bunch of resumes and you and your body can't move because you know you could send out a thousand resumes and the faucet is off mm-hmm. it's a it's an undeniable feeling that i'd never felt before so you know i went into meditation i was like well i've worked since i was 12 years old i've given birth to four children and what i told my family is that i was going to sit down and stop working because I had four kids. Like, that's a good enough excuse, right? I just had a new baby, um, which didn't work that well because I couldn't really explain to them that I was going through this planetary process of of alchemy where I was seeing the planet dismantled and going through this very profound experience while being the mother of this family, while my husband was going through sort of a midlife transformation. And rather than tell him he needed to go get a law job, I knew the way through was if he served his heart. Mm -hmm. And what he loved to do was athletics. And he also was quite a, quite a, like the nerdy kid that was beat up that had the Coke bottle glasses. He was never cool. And so he was a voyeur of all that is cool. So he knew every famous athlete, where they lived. Like he, if you walked in a room, he'd be like, that's you know, that's the two-time gold Olympic medalist. And, you know, he, he would know everything. I never know who anyone is. So I just knew that the way we were going to get through this was to serve our hearts, which made no sense. So um, there's more to the story, but we went through quite a lot of transformation in different ways. And, and he started doing um, double Ironman races, eating plants. And I was creating music. And so during that time, I was recording uh, music with my two sons who were like, you know, young, like eight, eight and 10. And then, you know, we did it all the way for a seven year period. And that music kept me alive. It was the thing. Um, And so, you know, I told Rich, he was so conflicted. And I would tell him, you train first, you see me in the kids second. And if a law job falls in your lap, then you just attend to it. And that's how it's going to go. And I remember at this one really epic point, I was like, you have to let go of the island to swim with me. Like, you've got to let go of that because this push-pull with law just Mm -hmm. kept buzz killing him. You know, it would be the universe, like, give me a job. No, I hate that job. You know, it doesn't doesn't work. 
Um, and then he finally let go and started swimming with me. I was like, that's a metaphor he can understand. Swimming. Yes. <laughs> Swim, honey. Yes. And then the help didn't come. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, it was yes. just brutal. And, you know, we found ourselves like, you know, I remember one time we just broke down crying in Starbucks just just from the sheer pressure. I used to go to Starbucks hoping somebody would buy me a tea. I didn't have enough money to buy my own tea. And I would hope that I would see someone that would offer to buy it for me. And that happened a lot. And then I would feel the cup in my hand. And that feeling of the Starbucks cup in my hand, as stupid as that sounds, was my sign that I wasn't going to leave my body. It was like the one Mm. small way that I could be connected to this humanity that I was going through this immense transformation with. And so many magical, mystical, miraculous things happened. And uh, and in the end, I mean, we were we were like we're on the razor's edge of even of either being completely annihilated and every decision we made being the wrong one to completely realizing all of our dreams. Mm-hmm. And we didn't know which way it was going to go. And I had to give it up to Divine Mother all the time, even in that state saying, well, maybe no one needs to hear my music. Maybe, maybe, we're, maybe it's really not significant. It really doesn't matter at all. You know, maybe you know, this isn't what our, what our life purpose is about. Um, but in the end, uh, it all caught, and we are realizing all of our dreams. Um, and life is still life. I mean, it's not like, you know, and now it's, you know, we're still in our evolution and process and all that and privileged to be alive. And, I, and what that was is it was a, an alchemy that prepared us to be worthy teachers. Mm-hmm. And that's what you heard on that podcast. And that's why I'm sitting here. Mm-hmm. It's because we lived it and it became part of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that can't be taken away from somebody telling me on social media, you're a fake guru. It's like, you know, yay. Mm. <laughs> awesome. You know, yes. it's just, it, it, it becomes something else. It's not like you read it in a book or you thought it was a yes. good idea. It's part of yourselves. And mm. that's the one thing Rich and I, you know, it became part of our DNA. And that experience drew us closer together because I wasn't putting my source on rich like you you know you have to provide for me and you're the guy and why aren't you doing that Mm -hmm. it it was a different thing than that it was about stepping outside of that violence Mm -hmm. and saying if I'm a divine being and I get to serve my heart and that's the way through then that's the way through for him and none of it made any no first of all no athlete makes money after Mm -hmm. a certain age and he was not the fastest athlete he was just an athlete like an amateur athlete, really, um, in his 40s. And I was making music in my 40s with my kids. Like, n- neither one of those things are, that's going to be a home run. But we just kept doing it, and it kept informing things. And, you know, we live a pretty beautiful life mm-hmm. that's ours, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, it's, if I'm kind of putting this against as contrast to what so many people feel like they have to do, which is kind of hop on a track that is sure and will provide them the um, compensation to, quote, live a full life. Um, I just find it to be like so otherworldly in a sense, like very new world-esque. Mm-hmm. And so it's inspiring that, as Krista said, you you both were able to hold the pose for long enough and have it serve as a model, not only for your children, but now obviously in a more public sense, people are able to feel the, just the profundity of, of actually alchemizing every single moment of your life and not numbing out Mm -hmm. in the midst of it. Because I think that's what we're kind of served so often, numb out using this Mm -hmm. substance or go on social media or watch this TV show or, what have you. So I just find it to be incredibly inspiring. Um, You talked about rewriting how to be in partnership, which um, I just find really, really fascinating. What, what, what do you see as kind of the, um, the peak of that rewriting with you and Rich? It's now. It's now. (laughs) Say more. It's happening now. Uh, Well, again, I mean, you know, I don't know. It was revealed to me 
through some of my mentors and teachers that my genetic was created to serve the masculine. It's not something my personality chose, but it, but I have over the years, and Rich would even tell you that I have an inordinate amount of men that reach out to me and it's not in a sexual way. It's in a, it's in a help me, you mm. know? And so he's seen it over, you know, many years, over 20 years that we've been together. Um, and I just, you know, again, we're getting back to the money paradigm thing. So again, money rules the world, right? And we quantify people based on their bank accounts and we glorify them based on how much money they have. Even while the ones that have so much money could do so much good in the world and none of them do. Mm -hmm. And that's just evidence to me that they are embodied by something that is not human. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to get weird on you or whatever, but I mean, if you had no the wealth... I know what you would do with it, right? Why yes. do they never do anything? I know. It's shocking. Shocking. So again, as we fall into this paradigm, I think is, and you know, I'm, I'm of a cer certain generation, so you know, you guys might be more evolved in this right now, but at least in my peer group, it was like, you know, no, like the guy, like, it, like we sort of have an out because we can have the kids and then, and you know, we can have the kids like the hardest job, like in the universe <laughs> that they could never do one fucking second. So let's just say that. But still, you know, if you look at it and listen, I'm the mom of two beautiful boys, uh, extraordinary beings and musicians. And, and, you know, we all have masculine and feminine within us. And it's like, I don't want my my boys brutalized, you know, or meant to go into profession where they're just sentenced to a life that is unfulfilling and not evolutionary because they have to put a certain level of income on the table so that everything can look a certain way. Um, it's still hard for women, like much harder for women, it, just in general. We've basically been removed from the culture you know which is something that is just blowing my mind the the levels and the and the pathways of that but I guess what I want to speak about is that I am I'm teaching a sacred sexuality workshop I don't know if you guys knew that in North Carolina I was waiting for someone else to do it and nobody I finally realized I'm gonna have to do it mm -hmm. So the point is, is I feel like we're in a moment of rewriting the way we're in relationship. And we see this in the culture coming up in all the gender fluid and, you know, all the trans movement and just the freedom and sexuality to not be pigeonholed into a certain identity. And I would say certainly present in my kit, in my children, the younger ones, they have no desire to play out these fairy tale princess bullshit that mm -hmm. like we, you know, was infused into our time. But I think what, where we are right now is we're at this moment of reclaiming our feminine power as a spiritual force, the divine feminine power and the divine masculine power, because the masculine power that has been operating on this planet is not in divinity. It is a reversal. Mm -hmm. So you, it's not as simple as, I mean, me too, yay. Like I have so many stories as does every single woman and no one is happier than me that that's being brought up for review, for reclamation to be called out. And it is not the solution to the problem. So if you fill into the energetics of just, uh, you know, of, of then calling someone out and punishing them, that's a punishing energetic in my being that doesn't feel triumphant. Mm -hmm. um, and we both have both of those energies within us. So one of the descriptions or ways you could view enlightenment would be the perfect balance of both of those energies into androgyny. So we are at a moment right now where we have to reclaim, we don't have to, but sexuality is our strongest force on planet earth and, and probably beyond. Mm -hmm. And most of the planet is using it at a boss level of really possession. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, like I always say, like if some like expanded alien race appeared and they were like, yes, and we went in their rooms and they were doing this weird thing, and, <laughs> you know, like, you know, and they call it masturbation. <laughs> like who made up that word? You know, it's just all so twisted. And really, when you think of spirituality as creativity is spirituality, is sexuality is creativity is spirituality. It's a trinity of energy. And so this workshop that I'm teaching is about us looking at the history and, and, you know, it could go back, this history has been changed on the planet. So this history that we're talking about is not really the history. And I'm sure it goes down the rabbit hole, like many, many levels. But let's just start in the Essene, Yeshua, Magdalene time period. And you can identify a lot 
that was stolen from us as a divine founder race. I'm talking about humans, all of us, humanity. And this Christic energy, the Christ principle is one of holding the vision of the highest vibration until the reality vibrates up to meet it. But instead, you had this crazy religious, um, you know, reversal, basically, where they remove the feminine out of the entire story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and literally, we were annihilated, murdered, burned at the stake for healing people with plants. Think about it. Mm -hmm. For an herb. And then look at the level of pharma that exists in our culture now and what is informing this entire scenario that we're in. And, you know, it's easy to get amnesia, you know, like I was raised thinking I was a free woman. And I would even go beyond that and say, really, none of us have been. But the good news is it's happening now. So what this workshop is about, it's about looking at the history and just looking at what is. It's about a purification and a removal. Many of us have attachments in different parts of our bodies because of um, a violation or any kind of abuse, or maybe it's ancestral, or maybe, you know, so this is where these sexual addictions run. Also, as human beings, when we just incarnate, we take on a level of the collective thing. Um, so it's about uh, removing this, clearing this, and then a reclamation of rituality around sexuality and what that means, and a sort of self-initiation and a re, a, like a, re, a reclamation or a vow or a promise to yourself to shift your perspective and your embodiment of this frequency and understand that sexuality can be used to heal the body, to heal the planet, to heal waters. It's a... It is the most powerful force that we have. And that's why it's been so preyed upon and so twisted and so used. So I do not um, pretend to have all the answers of how this is going to play out. I just know that I can no longer enter into the sexuality that was of my generation or my age or, my, or the culture. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, this is a solo experience. It will be nobody touching each other. This isn't about having a great orgasm or any kind of tools. This is about the spiritual reclamation of this frequency as your greatest power. And I, I think it will be the beginning. Um, I picked this center because it can take large numbers. Is that an art of living? It's art of living. Yeah. yeah. I did a silent retreat Oh, there. you did. Okay, so cool. Beautiful. So anyway, it's, um, we'll see what it is, uh, It'll be the beginning because we're all going to rewrite this, this together. And it's not about Tantra. It's not about white Tantra, red Tantra. It's not about yogic sex. Mm. It's not about any of that. Mm. It's about the next level. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so exciting and powerful. And there have been, and it, that's when I think about these times, I think about the polarity and duality and how like sex when you have something that is so light and so powerful oftentimes parasitic entities or non-human entities want to take the polarity of the positive like through sex practices that are misused how just on the duality piece of and I was always curious actually through the year of 2020 how did you sort of operate personally spiritually how did the family operate through such an interesting time Hmm. I'm not sure what your question is. I guess like what was your view on 2020 for the collective and then oh, for you mean, yourself okay, spiritually? 20, yes. I missed that. Okay. So the pandemic, uh, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I, um, knew it was, uh, an event with many different perspectives. There are many different sides to it. It can't really be explained mm -hmm. uh, from one perspective. And for me, it was an opportunity f to go inside and to find stillness and to, you know, often I say that I think we all gained five years. Everybody I see looks amazing. It's like, you look amazing. You know, I mean, and yet there's a lot of people that are taking transition at this time. Um, this is going to continue. Um, we are not through it. And this is part of the evolution and the plan of this realm transforming into something different. 
Um, I tell my listeners, you know, if I transition tomorrow, please do not reduce me to a COVID statistic because I am a sacred being and that will be my moment of exit. Um, and I think that, you know, to know that through my, my connections and my experience, that there are missions and teams of, of guides and spirits that are helping people, that are stewarding people out and understanding that we are eternal beings. So the death program is in this system. We are eternal life forms. Uh, we do not become extinguished or over. We all have a certain life print, I like to call it, that we play out. And it is really the soul's decision how that goes. So there are many different ways that we can leave the planet. <laughs> this planet offers quite a few. <laughs> uh, but, you know, in addition to COVID, which has been... Um, you know, massively uh, traumatic, and I'm not separated from the suffering of my humanity. And, you know, it's a real thing. It is a real thing that is happening, um, that, that is alive on this planet. Um, and uh, there are, um, there are just man many other stories that I have of, oh, my friend's brother got up and died on the way to the bathroom. Like, I'm hearing that stuff. I just heard something recently uh, someone's um, son just didn't wake up, you know, just went to sleep and didn't wake up. So, you know, we have things happening all the time. Um, this exit point is a mystery. My mother is 90, almost 93 and like wanted to die like three years ago and she's still kicking it. So I don't know why, like she's done, like she's ready to go. And then, you know, beloved um, companion of mine, Chief Golden Light Eagle um, transitioned last week mm -hmm. Um, and you know, he, he got COVID and I know this being, he is a multidimensional being and, you know, so that's the avenue that his soul picked to get him out, but he's eternal. And I can tell you that to the ends of the earth. So, um, I guess I've taken it as a, an opportunity to consider what is important to cultivate a connection to spirituality. I think it's necessary for people to you know, be drawn into that which is real. And what is real is that which is never changing beyond this body, beyond this life. So, um, and we've had a lot of family time. And also, not everyone in my family is living this experience that I am. You know, I live a very different experience. So I also just pop in and be a mom and, you know, play music or make food. You know, all that is very divine as well. So, um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah I was going to ask you about that. Just kind of this everyday popping in and out as like mm -hmm. kind of different, uh, version sounds like not the word for it, but for the sake of this, I'll just say versions of yourself. But did you ever have to kind of integrate those? Did it ever feel painful to kind of quote, just be a mom and cook and, you know, like, w was there ever that point of friction with that identity? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, when you're speaking, I'm just remembering of all the soccer games that I was just like, oh, like just <laughs> you're like, I have to bring the oranges this time. Yeah, stab yeah, my eyes like, out with pens. Yes. You know? <laughs> Kick the goal! Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah, lot, lots of that. And also lots of being, you know, the insane person with the bizarre perspective, you know. So, you know, I try to sit on the sideline and fit in. I try to blend in <laughs> as well as I can. I would so love to see that. A little problematic, you know. Even some of my friends today, they don't really know who I am. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess not not in the personality, but we, but we connect in another way. Um, I just recently um, took initiation at the spiritual community of Domenher, which is in northern Italy. Mm -hmm. And um, they are a community of beings that celebrate the diversity of life. And they built temples to mankind inside a mountain in secret over a 20-year period. It's a 6,000 square meter of absolute wonder. It's called the eighth wonder of the world by the Italian government. And they are alchemists, and they are uh, truly devoted to uplifting this planetary realm um, here and beyond. It was founded by an amazing individual named Falco uh, Tarasico, and he was a very much an alchemist, a, a very much a Harry Potter type figure, but in real life. And uh, and so um, it was 
I've been connected to them since like 2008 in different ways, but recently in the last two years, it's become um, more clear, very clear to me, my mission with them. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the only place that I can go on planet earth where everybody thinks the same way I do. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. it's very relaxing and, um, and it's not like you like everybody the same, you know, we have personality preferences or whatever, uh, but it's really beautiful to sit with people that are have the same sort of vision and they're dogma free and, you know, religion free. I mean, you think of that they formed in the Catholic country on the planet is quite profound. So they've been in community for over 47 years and there's 600 members and then thousands of members all over the planet, very international. And Shrimu, my plant-based um, not cheese, uh, mission of glo- of planetary awakening. Um, the ultimate goal of her is to fund this next temple, which is a living library of indigenous DNA on the planet, which affects all the species, mm. all humans, plants, animals uh, in this realm. And it's an $80 million um, complex. They have all the plans. They have the permits. And so um, Shrimu, that's the big why of Shrimu. That's why I'm building a unicorn company and why I'm out, um, you know, doing this. So, yeah, that helps me um, get out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Did did Shrimu exist before the why or did the why, which which came first? Wow, so interesting. So, yeah, I think Shrimu did exist before the why because I hadn't, I had been to Dom and her and always spoke about it, like, I tell everyone about Dom and her. Like if I'm in a cab, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm on a bus. I'm like, hey, have you heard of Dom and her? Like you should look it up. And everyone should look it up. Go look it up right now. Because what I said is like, oh, so crazy. When you see these temples, you will be Mm. like, oh, my God. So, um, yeah, I always just loved them so much and loved Falco and the way that he was. Like the things that he cared about. Like education, new education and alchemy. And he founded his first meditation school in Torino at age 22. And just the immense, uh, the immense being that he had to be in order to lead those people to stay with him for 47 years. I mean, humans don't like each other, first of all, like we don't want to stay together. I tried to get two families to homeschool with me and I failed up, you know, a bunch of times, but you know, so it's not easy to do that. And also I can't, you know, hang a picture on the wall. And they built these temples that are full of art. And not only that, but in the walls, there's alchemical operations and fluids. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's incredible. Mosaics, stained glass, all this stuff. So um, I was led to food very organically uh, to cook for rich. It was never on my vision board, although I'm a cancer. It was very easy for me to cook for 50 people. But I started feeding him as a love offering when I realized that he was like training these crazy hours. Um, And then that turned into our first cookbook, uh, which was Jai Seed, which fed us. Um, And then we started with the proper books. Then I, I, I developed over 500 recipes. It's, it's me, I'm the chef. Um, And when I, When I had just finished the Plant Power Way, I'd done a very basic section on cheese. But these three recipes, I couldn't even get the dish out of the kitchen onto the table before the kids had just devoured it completely. So when I finished, I was like, I'm going to do cheese. But I still wasn't focused on, you know, a global empire. I just did this cheese is nuts. I created this book with, you know, 70 recipes in it. And I was absolutely blown away at what I was able to create by being open and childlike and available, really. It show, it's really a creative demonstration of what's available, you know, in this, in this realm. And then afterwards, I took a long time meditating on it to really see if it's what I wanted to do. Because I had been in fashion before that has a lot of waste, you know, and I knew kind of what that whole thing was. But I meditated on it and understood that the planetary impact would be great. And that this was actually, finally, I had done something that was in the sweet spot mm. of being able to to reach a, a billion dollar company. You know, I'm always the one that's doing, oh, jackets with like 40 individual pieces with hand done. You know, I'm always the one that's not with the really good scalable <laughs> business idea. So for once I did it. And and so the the customer reviews are insane. And it's a subscription, as you guys know. So it's a subscription service mainly. 
And uh, it's a global mission of, of awakening. And it's, I call it the next evolution of cheese. It's made with pure awareness, love for the planet, mm. pure ingredients. And I ate it many, many times. I have a very sensitive stomach. It just blesses your body. And, you know, we have custom reviews of people saying that it healed their body. I know I can't claim that, but that's what they said. <laughs> and then uh, one of my greatest uh, reviews that I love is... Um, Shrimu. I ate Shrimu and I felt like a better person. That's my favorite. Um, but then also someone just uh, wrote in, which was hilarious. She was like, my husband and I got in a fight because he accused me of hiding Shrimu. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't really know, but I'm telling you, it gives me, you know, I am here for this planet, for humanity, for the animals and, and not as um, just truly, like truly, truly, the privilege to be alive in a body, to go through this transformation. I want to remind everybody how sacred this time is. Mm -hmm. And there's so much beauty happening in the unseen places. It looks really ugly right now, and it is. But it's because we have to get through this step to start to create the beauty and bring in what is really true. We are all spiritual beings having a human experience. No one is more or less spiritual than another, or more, no one is more or less loved or valued than another. But it is a personal choice, and you do have to you do have to employ your will. Um, so we are potentially divine, and the big question is, how are we going to do that? What will that look like? And the other big question is, who will we need to become in order to create this world of beauty that we were talking about? Oh, so that land. Mm -hmm. How does it feel? You said you're turning 59. I did. You right. did turn it's 59. Done. It has happened. So it's done. Oh, yeah, cancer blood. season. Yes, cancer yes. season. Um, so second Saturn return. Yes, exactly. We started almost 30, obviously, during our Saturn return. It's mm -hmm. kind of the impetus. It's the big one. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, what have you... What have you learned during this season? And what, what are you taking with you, I suppose, as this cycle's um, serious moment? I feel like the Saturn return always brings kind of this, like, this reckoning of sorts, this refocus, this, ah, okay, this is what's important to me. What is that for you? Yeah, so, well, a few things. I mean, um, I, I, uh, convinced my Vedic astrologer to give me my death date, which is not an easy thing to do. I love the start of the Jeez. answer. <laughs> well, I, I love it because date. I love these conversations because I feel like so many people are afraid of death. And so yes. I really appreciate the kind of normalization of yes. the beauty of. Well, and also just to be clear, I mean, I might be afraid of death when I'm dying, but it's like, I'm not, I'm not afraid of the overarching death. Because what was I your immediate response to the, to the thing? When they, when they shared the number with the you. date. Well, it was this funny thing. It was, do you guys know about Chakrapani? Did nah. you ever hear about him? Okay. Well, he's a legend. He's no longer alive. So we've missed him, but he, he's a notorious and like celebrated Vedic astrologer. And when I was growing up in yoga with Rich and we were at like Maha yoga doing mm -hmm. like funk, you know, yoga or whatever, everyone started going to Chakrapani, but they kept coming back just completely beaten up because it wasn't about, oh, you're so smart or you're going to, you know, you're so amazing and you're going to be so successful because the Vedic chart is actually showing you what is actually your life. And there was a lot of immaturity, you know, and young people mm. in that. So everybody's like, don't go to Chakrapani. Like I've been screwed up. I've been fucked up for weeks, like <laughs> since I had that reading. And then later in my life, much later, I knew he was living in LA. And because I'm such a Vedic lover and have had so many lifetimes in that in those lineages, I was like, I just want to go sit with him. So I booked this appointment and we went and had a hilarious appointment. So he kept looking at my thing and he would say like, your husband is very athletic and famous in a very niche, you know, specific thing connected to food. And I would say, I know that's true. And he would say, I know I'm looking at it. <laughs> and then he would tell me, you have no possibility of a good relationship with your father this lifetime. And I'd say, that's been my entire pain my whole life. Like, that's true. And he'd say, I know, I'm looking at it. <laughs> so I finally realized after the third time that he was like a scientist looking at these things that were actually true in my life. So then I said, when is my death date? And he wouldn't, he was like, why do you want to know that? Like, I'm not telling you. And I was like, no, I want to know. I go, I want to know. Because first of all, 
you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a shaman of sorts, you know, we'll use that word loosely, but if you tell me it's tomorrow, I'm just going to do a ceremony and cancel it. So I don't believe that my chart <laughs> rules me. I just want to know what the, what the predisposition is in mm. the chart. So then he wouldn't tell me, wouldn't tell me. And then I was started asking him questions like, when you die, would the planet be positioned X? So I finally, through a process of elimination, I got to it. So it's about 24 years from now. Um, and uh, is it 24 years? Yeah, about 24 years from now, 25 years from now, in that predisposition. So I really look at my life as this privilege of being alive. So how am I going to use those years? Mm -hmm. And again, getting back to Water Tiger and being very curated about, oh, what do I spend my time doing? So we all have mm -hmm. the same amount of time in the world. So how are we going to spend that? So I think um, that's definitely something that is very uh, present in my daily life. Like I'm never like just on autopilot. It's a, it's, this is precious. Like, and, and also my knowledge with Dom and her of understanding that complexity, meaning the more things you do, mm -hmm. see in our society, that's frowned upon, right? Like you should just do one thing and then mm -hmm. you'd be successful. But in spiritual terms, the more things you do, the more evolution you you throw off for yourself and for others. So suddenly I'm delighting in my myriad of projects and things that I'm doing. Um, uh, and I think the, the main thing is uh, being embodied in who I am and advocating for me first and starting to wonder like what, what would like look like for me if I was fully embodied in, in who I am, and we're all hiding aspects of ourselves, mm -hmm. all of us, there are pieces. So as I bring those forth and I sit in this embodiment, um, what is possible? So I am open to the miracles of the body, of what the body will do, of what we will learn, that different abilities, senses, you could call them powers, um, com maybe communion with individuals that have transitioned that you can't see in this realm you know many sort of processes also of art and alchemy programming art for alchemical reasons for awakening sound is another one for me so i'm working on a lot of music but also sound as a really profound healer mm -hmm. um and and transformer um connection with the planet, like the stones and the waters and the earth. And I'm excited for what's waiting to come in that hasn't come in yet, because I have some earthly things that I'm going to wrap up. Like mem I have a couple memoirs. I have definitely one or two more albums. I've got a couple paintings that I'm finishing. I've got Shrimu, Global Awakening, Unicorn, you know, $80 million temple in Dom and Her. Um, but then what about the other aspect of me that is integrating. Um, so I, I just said we're spiritual beings having a human experience, but really we're simultaneous beings having, no, we're multidimensional beings having a simultaneous experience. And so if we can start to identify those other aspects of ourselves, we can gain this great power by integrating those 12 into the 13th into one. And so it's a, it's, it's a beautiful playground, like quite open. The only thing that I would say is that I am eternalizing. I am not aging. And that doesn't mean that I'm chasing being 20, but I am eternalizing into the divinity of who I am, which is an infinite eternal being mm -hmm. while embodied in form. And so I'm guessing there will be great miracles for many of us who are open to experience that. So I don't read books on parenting or aging or I don't have a lot of mirrors around. Um, I, uh, I'm i here to f be open to like a new vista, a new way. Beautiful. So beautiful. I think we can wrap it i feel so good um so you have your retreat happening I you can. have shri Moo, mm -hmm. which is the subscription cheese box service we have water tiger anything else yeah well i just want to mention because i i think your listeners are definitely um my my family my nice. cosmic family as well so part of my experience 
if I can just share really, really quickly, is that I went into trying to raise for Shreemu in the old paradigm way. So I took 60 financial mm. meetings in the last wow. year and three months. In those 60 meetings, I saw four women. And they weren't even lead women. They were in the secondary position or behind or something. And I suddenly realized when I got to the end of it, I was offered $1.5 million for my next phase. And I turned it down. Um, I spent a day going, oh, someone just offered me $1.5 million. Hmm, how's that feel? Okay, no. Um, but my point is, is I were turned into that which I am, which I am an alchemist. And I came here for the magic carpet ride. And I'm fully um, ready to embody all that it takes mm -hmm. to bring Shreemu to that level. And I want to do it my way. And if there's any a time, any, if there was ever a time where we can do it, it's right now. And so part of that is um, we're starting what we're calling a luminary sort of rollout. And it's much like maybe in the, um, in the inspiration of Beauty Counter, but where we're um, bringing boxes into luminaries where you have a cheese party, a not cheese party, and uh, you get, you know, like a discount on product and then you get a commission on all everything that you sell. And I really have a desire to build that community because for me, it's the place where I can share the spiritual wisdom and the expansion, all that stuff. So that's a new, exciting thing that's connected to Shreemu um, and the subscription box. You know, we now have like five different offerings for that. So um, yeah, you can check all that out at Shreemu.com or you can e email do life at Shreemu.com for more info on that. I love that because I think, you know, the education piece is so important too. And for people to actually have it be a part of either what they talk about or share in their daily lives is like what makes it eternal, you know, rather than just taking a million and a half and being like, okay, let's scale this really quickly. It's like, how do we, how do we build this through human beings who truly believe and what I've created. So I think yeah, that's and it, really beautiful. Thank you. I mean, it became essential. And it was it was one of those times where I, it was a missing piece because I hadn't ever been to those kind of meetings with a product like mm -hmm. that. So I was like, oh, well, there's, a, there's an answer. Mm -hmm. And then I realized there's no answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Thank you for I that. I love this. You're so welcome. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you for inviting me on. It's lovely yes, to spend these so good. precious time together. Yeah, so lovely. Thank you so much for all your wisdom here. And then just forever in the ether. Mm -hmm. um, we love you guys so much. We'll see you on the next one. See you on the next Yay. one. Bye. Thanks, Bye. loves. <laughs>